Glory be to Allah, all praise to Allah, there is no God but Allah, Allah is great, all power and might belong to Alhamdulillah, was salatu was salam, al rasulillah wa ala ali wa sabi ajmain, amma abad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأتصيم بحبل الله جميع ولا تفرق رب شهل صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be on all of you. Can you in increase the effect a little bit? And the bass make it a bit low. And the highs increase a little bit more. And the bass effect a little bit more. <coughs> the topic of this evening's talk is unity in the Muslim ummah, little less. The topic is unity in the Muslim Ummah. This is an important, a unique, and a very sensitive talk. Important because none of the Muslims will disagree that there is no unity in the Muslim Ummah. So it's a very important topic. It is a unique topic because <clears throat> as most of you may be aware that most of my talks are targeted towards Dawa, targeted towards the non-Muslims as well as the Muslims together and I usually give two types of talks one type which is related to comparative religion for example similarities between Hinduism and Islam similarities between Islam and Christianity, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hindu scriptures, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the world, various world scriptures, is Jesus God, was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, crucified, and various talks. These talks, though they are targeted or meant for the non-Muslims, giving them knowledge about Islam and the comparative religion, it even benefits the Muslims to a great extent to do dawah amongst the non-Muslim friends. So it's for both. Though the topic is on comparative religion, it's meant for both. For the non-Muslim giving knowledge about Islam and for the Muslims giving knowledge about comparative religion, how to do dawah. The other group of talks that I give is mainly on issues which are current, which the media attacks Islam. For example, women's rights in Islam. Or people think today is the age of science and technology, Islam is outdated. So Quran and modern science. These talks of second groups, it caters to both. The Muslims get knowledge about the rights of the women in Islam, about how scientific the Islamic religion. At the same time, the Muslims are also educated about the religion, about the good points, about the haq of the religion. There are very few talks which I have given, hardly any, which especially cater only to the Muslims. For example, Al-Quran, should it be read with understanding? Because some of the Muslims say that Quran should not be read with understanding, so I gave that talk. Or Dawa or destruction. These talks are exclusively for the Muslims, even though the non-Muslim will benefit but it is more targeted towards the Muslims. So today's talk I say is unique because it is more, it's mainly meant for the Muslims. The non-Muslim may also benefit, but mainly meant for the Muslims. Unity in the Muslim Ummah. And I say my talk is going to be sensitive. Unlike my other talks meant for the Muslims, only a small group of Muslims believe that Quran should not be read with understanding. The majority believes it should be read with understanding. 
Some group of Muslims say dawa should not be done. Majority believe it should be done. But this topic, unity in the Muslim Mumma, is sensitive. It involves each and every one of us, each and every type of Muslim. Therefore, I say it's sensitive. And I request all of you that please pay careful attention to the matter of my talk. Inshallah, it will be enlightening. At the same time, it will show you the true picture of Islam. Inshallah. Therefore, please pay careful attention to my talk. This talk of mine, Unity in the Muslim Ummah, I may not be able to cover all the aspects, all the solution. I'll try and cover the major ones. Number one reason for disunity in the Muslim Ummah is because of the various sects that we have, as well as the various schools of thoughts amongst the Muslim Ummah. You may call it Madhab, you may call it Maslak, you may call it Musalla. So the main reason, number one, the major reason is because of the various sects that are there in the Muslim Ummah and the various schools of thoughts, the Madhabs or the Maslaks or the Musallas we call it. Inshallah, at least I'll try and cover this major point and if time permits, some other points also. And quite a large portion of my talk will be in the form of question and answer which is usually asked in our day-to-day -day life so that whatever questions I pose each individual can ask that same question to himself and give the reply to himself so that you may come to know where does each individual stand and as most of you know the master key for da'wah of Islam according to me in the Quran the verse of the Quran is Surah Al-Imran chapter number 3 verse number 64 which says Kul ya hilal kitab Say O people of the book Ta'alo ila kalmitin sawa im bainuna bainakum Come to common terms as with us and you which is the first term Allah na'buda illallah that we worship none but Allah Wala nushrika bihi shayyam that we associate no partners with him Wala yattakhiz abad dun abad dun arbab and minun illa that we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. But if they turn back, Fakulu Shadu, say I bear witness, Bianna Muslimun, that we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have mentioned in several of my talks that this verse of the Quran, which says, Come to common terms as between us and you, though it mentions Ahle Kitab, specifically referring to the Jews and Christians, it can refer to any type of non-Muslim, whether it be Hindu or a Buddhist or a Jain, come to common terms as with us and you. And if we take it a step further, according to me, it can even apply to the Muslim Ummah. That when we have differences in the Muslim Ummah, the best thing to do is come to common terms as with us and you. So this part of the verse, according to me, can also be used for the Muslim Ummah and it is the best way for doing Islah for correcting the Muslim for getting them to the straight path normally when you ask any Muslim which is the most authentic and best book of Islam which is the best source of knowledge in Islam can anyone guess 